So to kick off this chapter, it's time to lay some foundations around all the buzzwords you may have been hearing in the industry. You may have heard of a number of terms related to this field of study. Things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, or even deep learning. So let's take a moment to formally define them as often they're misused. Now, artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is essentially the science of making things smart, or more formally speaking, human intelligence exhibited by machines. However, this is a very broad term, and right now, you are able to create systems that are a form of narrow AI. And what does that mean? Well, narrow AI is simply a system that can do one, or maybe a few things, as well or better than a human expert for that task. A great example would be text classification. As a web developer, you may have at some point been asked to make a contact form where the user writes a message, that message is sent to the company, and someone decides what sub-team it should be forwarded to. Well, with advances in technology, you can now train a system to automatically route the message to the correct team based on the content if there's enough examples to learn from. Pretty useful, right? Or how about the medical industry that can use an AI system to scan through grainy medical images of brain scans to accurately identify tumors in such images with an accuracy that can exceed a professional. This can make analysis faster, more accurate and cost efficient than ever before, which is great for both doctor and patient. Now there's a lot of systems right now that work hand in hand with their human counterparts to create a workflow that is more efficient than ever before. So next up, you have machine learning, or ML for short. Machine learning is an approach to achieve AI that was spoken about on the previous slide. Essentially, this is the implementation of the actual program that runs and can learn from prior experience to find patterns in a given set of data. It can then use this knowledge to classify previously unseen examples of the same type in the future. Now, what makes these machine learning programs powerful is that they can be reused and trained with new data without changing the code itself. So if I create a machine learning system that recognizes cats, it can use the same code without modification to then recognize dogs, just by feeding it different training images for it to learn from. And this is very powerful and a big difference to how you used to program in the past. Take spam email as an example. With traditional programming, you may have had a bunch of conditionals or lookups to check if a word was associated with spam. If it was, you would block the email. However, the spammer can get savvy of this, modify the word just slightly, and our system is then broken. Thus, a tug of war between spammer and programmer develops, which is not a good use of your time. Fast forward to today, and you can now use machine learning to solve this problem. Instead, thousands of users mark emails as spam, and the machine learning will automatically figure out what words and features are most likely to have contributed to those spam emails. You can retrain the model every day with fresh content, and now no human needs to be involved to maintain manual lists, freeing up time to do other things. And there are many common use cases out there for machine learning that go beyond text too. For example, object recognition, to know what exists in an image. Here, you can see how many and where in the image the dogs are located. One thing to consider is that object detection is subtly different from image recognition. When someone refers to the term image recognition, the machine learning system will tell you that something exists in an image, but it won't tell you where or how many, and sometimes misuse these terms, so watch out for that. Or what about linear regression? This sounds a little scary, but all it means is that you are predicting a numerical value for some other numerical input value. Just like in your high school mathematics, where you might use a line of best fit through some points on a graph to make a correlation between something on the x-axis and something else on the y-axis. For example, what's the price of a house if the square footage is 1000 square foot? With enough data, you can predict this with machine learning if you plot all your known data points on the graph like the ones shown here. You can use linear regression to essentially find the line of best fit automatically for you, which you can then use to make predictions for any house size. Or how about natural language processing to understand human language itself? With this, you can detect if a comment is spam before it's even sent to the server to be stored. Or maybe you could understand the sentiment of a comment for analytics. 
for example, is a social media post about a topic, positive, negative, or neutral. Today, this era of research is so advanced, you can even get machines to summarize text for us, or answer complex questions from a passage of text like you see on this slide, where it can scroll us to the answer on any web page or even translate between languages. You've even got audio-based ML for speech recognition, turning human voice into readable text. I'm sure many of you have smartphones with digital assistants or tried the web speech APIs of JavaScript in the browser, and this is all powered by machine learning behind the scenes. You have the ability to generate audio too, like the demo linked on this slide that turns your voice into a musical instrument of your choice, for example. Which brings us on to the generative or creative use cases of machine learning, one of which you can see here, which is created by NVIDIA's research. The key thing to note is that none of the faces in this animation are real. They've been dreamt up by the machine learning model, just like if I asked you to imagine a purple cat, you probably could do so even though you've never seen one. Here, the machine learning has learnt the essence of what a human face is composed of, and then is asked to generate new ones that it thinks pass as real human faces. These are just a few examples of what machine learning is commonly being used for today. There are many more use cases out there too, and this will continue to grow in the future as industry and research continue to invest more in the field. And by using machine learning in your solution, you can reduce the amount of time spent programming. Imagine you wanted to recognize a marker pen in an image. Sure, you could write some custom code to do this like I did here, where I try to define logical rules that would allow you to find it in a given image, maybe based on the color and edge detection, for example. And maybe after weeks of coding, you'd have something that works in certain situations, but would fail in others, like poor lighting or if the pen branding or color changes. Alternatively, you can use machine learning to recognize such objects simply by feeding it example images of the object in question and get a more reliable solution in a fraction of the time. Secondly, it will allow you to customize your product to a diverse group of users. Taking our marker pen example, let's say you wanted to use this for pencils instead of marker pens. You could simply reuse your existing machine learning solution and feed it images of pencils instead delivering a solution to your next customer faster than ever before. Finally, it can help you solve seemingly unsolvable problems if you are using traditional programming. As a human, I can recognize a face, but I have no idea how I actually do that. And it's really hard for me as a programmer to translate the simple task that I do as a human to code-based logic. Yet this sort of task is relatively simple for a machine learning system to figure out. With machine learning, you change the way you think about how you solve problems. Traditional programmers are trained to think logically and mathematically, but for machine learning, the focus shifts to making observations about the data fed into the system, which uses statistics behind the scenes that can update its understanding of the world for the task at hand, rather than using pure hard-coded logic. So what about deep learning? Deep learning is essentially one technique you can use to implement the machine learning programs spoken about on the previous slides. You can think of this as one of many possible algorithms you can choose from to make the machine learning program actually work. There are of course many other techniques too. Here, a concept known as deep neural networks is shown, which essentially are code structures that are arranged in many layers that loosely mimic how scientists believe the human brain to work learning patterns of patterns the further down the layers you go. And what do I mean by that? Well, imagine at the early stages, a single part of a network can recognize something simple like lines or edges in an image. Go one level deeper, and that line data from the previous layer may be combined to allow you to recognize shapes, which ultimately are just a collection of lines. And one level deeper still, those shapes might combine to allow you to recognize objects. For example, a face might be represented by several shape features that always appear in certain positions relative to each other. Generally, the deeper the network, the more advanced patterns it can recognize, but this comes at cost of processing power. So in summary here, you can see how these three terms are actually linked. The deep learning is the algorithm you can use to drive the machine learning program, and this machine learning program gives us an illusion of artificial intelligence, if you will. Now, these core concepts go back to the 1950s. They're not actually very new, but it's only now that you have the resources at cheap enough cost, such as the RAM, the CPU, or the graphics card known as the GPU, to make these ideas feasible, which is one reason for its recent growth in this domain. 
and you're living in a truly exciting time, it's not often to be part of a new industry. And you are at the start of a new wave right here for how you can create smarter systems in the future. In fact, machine learning could influence every industry out there. And over the years, human society has actually gone through many different ages. You might be familiar with the Industrial Revolution, for example, and currently you are living in the scientific or digital revolution. However, we are fast approaching what I believe to be the machine learning revolution, or maybe you're already in it. Notice how for each revolution, it's shorter than the last, but makes more human progress in terms of innovation than the prior one in terms of area under the graph. In fact, this next age could lead to more progress and innovation than all of those that came before combined. All right, so now you know the basics, let's move on to how such systems can be trained over in the next lesson.